imitate, assimilate, innovate. This trio of words, cherished by musicians and educators worldwide, encapsulates the guitarist's journey from student to artist. Our guitar heroes inspire and drive us to imitate their playing as accurately as possible. Assimilating their teachings, we construct a foundation of skills, techniques, and vocabulary. This groundwork rewards us with creative freedom to innovate, nurturing our unique sound and artistry. Join us this month as we celebrate guitar heroes and legends that have inspired and influenced many of our own True Fire artists and educators. You just might discover a few new guitar heroes and legends to add to your own list. Let's dig in. Chet Atkins was a legendary country guitarist known for his impeccable finger-picking style. His unique blend of country, jazz, and pop influences created a distinctive sound that set him apart. Atkins' intricate fingerstyle technique and flawless execution made him one of the most respected guitarists in the country music world. Today's free lesson on Chet Atkins is from Muriel Anderson's Guitar Heroes course. Let's dig in. Well, as you may know, a huge influence in my playing and in my life was Chet Atkins. And I didn't actually discover his music until I was in college. I had only heard where he did some single note melodies with an orchestra, so I didn't realize all that he could do. And not only in the traditional style, the country style that he's known for, but he had a huge range of influences himself and played a huge amount and a huge range of music as well. So the way it came about is I was going to college where uh, I was learning classical guitar and that was only because at that time I, there wasn't a bluegrass major, right? And so that was the only way I could go to college and still play guitar. So I kind of reluctantly went into that. and. Uh, so to give myself a little break from the rigorous studies from uh, college, I signed up for mandolin lessons. So I just so I would just do that for fun, and uh, I guess it was more humor lessons than mandolin lessons. I took lessons with Jethro Burns in Evanston, Illinois, and he was part of the Homer and Jethro comedy duo that played at the National Barn Dance and performed all around. Uh, so I played this little tune that I was working out. Uh, I was working it out, it was kind of inspired by something that I heard Bela Fleck do on the banjo. I heard him do this melodic banjo where he plays kind of a, a scalar things, but on different strings. So using open strings and notes up the neck. And I was thinking, well, what tune would, would that work on? And I, I came up with Nola that I heard my mother play on the piano. Uh, and I found that that one really works great with that style. So it goes like this. And I played that for Jethro, and he said, well, you've got to meet my brother-in-law, Chet Atkins. And I didn't know that Chet had been doing this melodic style technique for decades, and he called it cross-string fingering. I was calling it melodic banjo on the guitar. And uh, although Chet uh, didn't play that particular piece in that style. So uh, Jethro made the introduction. He wanted uh, Chet to hear that. And... Uh, it's funny that uh, Chet and Jethro married identical twin sisters when they were working together in the National Barn Dance. So they were more than brother-in-laws. <laughs> uh, so uh, that was a, a stroke of uh, fortune. And uh, Jethro uh, introduced us, and I got Chet on the phone. And even though I couldn't go to his concert, I had a, a hotel gig, my, uh, my first gig there. And... Uh, Chet said, well, you know, what time is your gig over? And, and he said, well, my gig's over about the same time. So he was talking about his uh, concert at Orchestra Hall in the same breath as my little hotel gig. And he invited me to, to come over in the hotel lobby. And, and there I, uh, I'm going to go back up to regular tuning. I was in drop G for that. I heard that he had uh, 
uh, done a, a tune called Wheels, and so I, I looked it up and, and uh, learned as much of it as I could. So it went on like this, and Chet listened all the way through to it, and after I was finished, he said, oh, that's very nice. I play it like this. I put a capo on, and, and I play it in dropped G tuning. And so I had learned it entirely wrong. <laughs> and when Chet played it, he played it like this. So all of a sudden, it was a whole lot easier to play and sounded a whole lot better. And then he went up high. There was another thing that I learned from Chet that changed my playing altogether is the way he did harmonics. And he was sitting there. I'm tuning back up to standard tuning, by the way. So he did this. And I was amazed. I'd never heard something like that. You know, what are you doing? And so he said, oh, this is something I learned from Lenny Bro. And he said he was playing a, one harmonic note and one natural note with his finger. So he's doing a harmonic with these two, touching the 12th fret, a natural note, and then moving on like that. And for that, that riff on um, Bojangles, he just did a hammer on and continued the pattern on. And I teach that uh, in detail on my 50 right hand techniques course. So if you wanna go down that rabbit hole, a uh, lot of things that uh, stem from that, from that technique, a lot of different things that you can do, uh, including what uh, I figured out. So, I, so I, I, I worked out this technique and then I thought, well, if you can do it with one harmonic and two natural, uh, and one note, why not one harmonic and two natural notes? And so I uh, figured that, yeah, you could still get that ringing sound. And that's the sound that I use for view from space, and night lights, and um, this one. That's uh, two shores. So all those big sparkling harmonic sections um, are directly inspired by what Chet showed me that day um, in the kitchen of his office.